YouTubers and welcome back to my channel. Uh, for this video I'm going to be working on a detail that's uh, often overlooked as telephone poles. Uh, in this video I'm going to explain how I set up my telephone poles and why I do what I do. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. So for my telephone poles I use uh, a different uh, wide array of uh, products. I like the uh, Rick's products poles, um, particularly the longer ones. I think they're 40 footers. I also use uh, shish kebab skewers. Uh, they're very cheap and you can buy them in bulk. And I use uh, Rick's products uh, cross arms. I'll uh, cut the cross arms pieces, uh, the little uh, insulators, I'll cut them off a little bit to make them a little more realistic and staggered. I also uh, uh, place multiple cross arms per pole and sometimes I uh, cut the co top cross arm or maybe even the bottom cross arm down and the insulators when I cut them off I save them and glue them down there on the side of the pole sometimes for the really thick cable that would hang off this and then droop from pole to pole. I also purchase uh, Showcase Miniatures uh, medium uh, what are they, transformers and they come in a kit. Uh, there's lots of different little parts and pieces in there. I'll show you uh, one of the transformers. It has a way to um, mount to a pole if you drill a small hole in the back. Uh, I paint mine like a greenish silver color. This one's not finished yet, but it's uh, partial. And then um, I'll also make my own guy wires. Uh, these guy wires uh, come off the side of the telephone pole and then go into the ground. Uh, it's just brass tubing glued onto a thick metal wire. I think it's a 40 thousandths wire. Uh, I get it from KNS Engineering. Um, and then uh, just uh, bend the very top piece, drill a hole into the side of the pole where I want the guy wire to come out, and then bring it down alongside the pole, put it into the ground. So uh, let's go back over to the diorama and I'll explain uh, how I set up my poles. Okay, so when I'm building a diorama for photographic purposes, I want the I want the cross arms on the poles to be on the side that you're looking at rather than say if you were looking at it from this side I don't turn the pole around and have the cross arms facing away from you. I know it's kind of hard to see right now but uh, in person when you're here you'll be able to see those uh, cross arms pretty good. Um, also, these poles are a little tall, but it's pink foam. I can push it down into the foam until uh, until it looks proper. Uh, this pole, as you can see, has um, some holes drilled in it already for the insulators and for the transformers. It also has uh, like a T-section of telephone wire, which would come over here to this one. This pole will then be here it will have a t-section on it and it'll go across the road to this pole which will be right here and then that pole will be the last one on the diorama I always try to put poles right at the edge of the diorama if I if I make the end over here then I can't put real wire out to the end and then the last pole of course will be right here at the edge and Unfortunately, it'll have to be facing away from the modeler, like so. And that, for that reason, is when I'm standing over there taking a photograph facing this way, you'll be able to see the detail on the pole. As for setting up the uh, distance between poles, I've had a lot of people tell me uh, my poles are too close or too far apart. Uh, the scale, I think, is 100 or 150 foot between two poles. Um, I've been out measuring poles, 
I have pictures to show. I don't own the rights to any of these photos, but uh, just look at the different lengths between the poles. Some are super close and some are pretty far apart. Okay, so before I go any further, I'd like to mention that um, I broke my miniature tripod. Uh, the screw uh, <laughs> is broke, uh, so I can't tighten it up or loosen it. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes just to get it out of the camera. Uh, so I apologize if I bump my new tripod, because it's a tall one sitting right next to me. Uh, but uh, back to the modeling. So uh, I counted out how many poles I would need. These are the poles that are going to be used. Uh, one of them does have the cross arm that faces like a T-section. So I'll have to match that one up to uh, one of the other poles that is sitting here. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just uh, just start building on this pole right here. I need one more pole that matches those. So I just cut them off the sprue. I'm going to have three cross arms. Uh, and these telephone poles, they'll come out pretty good. They look pretty realistic. Uh, you do have to paint them. Uh, there's a lot of different colors also for telephone poles. There really is no right and wrong way to do it. I only do it this way because this is what I like. Um, it's just what I like to do. Uh, and they come out looking pretty good. Not, you know, super realistic, but uh, pretty darn good nonetheless. So I like to take a little bit of glue. This is probably a bad idea because it ruins the mat. But I like to put a little bit on my mat. Uh, and then I'll take the cross arm. Make sure that the bracket is on the outside, not on the inside, um, because it's set up to go this way. At least I've I've broken off ones that were that were uh, opposite. Uh, this pole is pretty bent, so I'm going to use this one. I've already put a little bit of uh, the Minwax stain marker. Uh, markings on this one uh, but uh, what I'm gonna do is just dip the cross arm and a little bit of the glue and then stick it on the same height as the other ones so uh, so I have them glued on uh, they're just sitting on there uh, with the clamp uh, the tweezer clamp and um, waiting for those to dry uh, I can go ahead and take this pole and uh, start doing the uh, crosses for it. Uh, this pole will be the second pole that comes off of this big tall main pole. And this pole will also have a T-section cross on it that goes in front of the gas station. So as you can see on the Rick's poles, there are little notches right here where the cross arms go. Uh, I'm going to pick one of those notches to put the cross arm uh, pull next to, but I'm going to scrape the other ones off because I don't want them to, to be seen. And just uh, take a sharp exacto and go up and down the pole. And this will pretty much get rid of those notches so you can't see them. Uh, it's not probably not going to get rid of them 100%, but it will uh, get rid of them enough to where they're not very visible. <laughs> that looks a little better. And when I paint it, uh, a lot of that will go away. 
So uh, I have three poles that are going in front of the gas station. So, oh, let's pull this one out. This is one of them. And this is the cross arm one. And then I'm going to have a third one over in front of the gas station. So, actually, no, the two in front of the gas station don't have cross arms yet. So what I'm going to do is take the pole that I just scraped. I got to put a uh, a cross on it. All I did was uh, clean up the cross arm and just leave a couple of insulators on it. Dip it in my glue over here. And put it on. Well, it has like a ridge on it. Scrape it a little bit. I want it to be a flat surface kind of on the side of the pole. Let's clean off the shavings. Whee! Sometimes gluing these on or can be a pain in the butt. Alrighty. So I got like a T section and I'll uh, set this up in another set of tweezers and then I'll be right back. Find a button. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed and uh, my camera is moving by itself. Uh, the new tripod is it, it's not exactly built for the camera. So if the camera just swings around suddenly and you see my ugly mug, then you know what happened. Uh, let's check the uh, poles. Uh, they've been glued for a while. Uh, they're pretty uh, sturdy. There's the uh, T-section pole that'll go across the street from the gas station. And then uh, the two poles that go just down the road. Uh, that one's good. And that one is good. And then the wooden pole, the shish kebab skewer with the cross arms, those are good. Got some hairs on them, I'll have to pull those off before I paint. Um, what I want to do is paint them a light reddish brown, um, like the uh, poles that you'll see in the photos here. Okay, so I put uh, a couple of different washes. I use a, uh, a rust color. Here is the uh, painted pole and here is the unpainted pole. Uh, I don't know if you can really tell the difference. Uh, this one's more of a reddish brown. Uh, as the paint dries, I'll put a second and third coat on it to, um, to try and uh, get it a little more lighter. And then... Um, Toward the end, I'll take like a lighter tan and thin it and just go over some of the spots and just brush it uh, very quickly uh, on the pole like this to just give it a little bit of a light layering. Uh, I don't want the entire tan uh, pole to be tan, but then again, I don't want the entire pole to be dark brown either. Uh, and I don't want it to be all reddish brown. I want it to look like there's some patching and layers and pieces of wood that are chipping off maybe and that's how you do that. Uh, well, that's how I do it. Uh, 
so I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, cut away and paint the rest of these poles and uh, when I come back I'll start putting transformers on this one and this one I don't know if you saw that <laughs> uh, I gotta get used to the new uh, the new tripod it's like a five foot tall Vivitar tripod and I'm using a Sony Handycam camera uh, so they don't really they don't really go along too well. I've already had to cut a few videos and delete them because the camera swings around and shows the ceiling. <laughs> but uh, hopefully I can get it good. So there you go. Just very lightly paint a uniformed color on there. Um, have it a little bit scattered. Uh, you don't want it you know, to be completely covered with one color. So I'll cut away and be right back. Alrighty, so you can see that the uh, transformers and the insulators are on there. Uh, the telephone pole is kind of painted up, a little weathered. Uh, a great modeler once said that uh, models should uh, in dictate real life and vice versa. Uh, with uh, many, many layers of different colors, textures, and... Uh, I believe that that is very true. Uh, that great model is Ron Perry. Uh, I haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, if you're out there, Ron, uh, you know, put a message down below. Let me know you're doing all right. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is uh, kind of the finished pole. Um, I'm going to go over the uh, transformers a little bit more with uh, my green paint years and years and years ago more than 10 years ago I bought this um, color of slate gray uh, Americana paint I bought two of them and I put an X on the top of the lid this one I mixed with a little bit of teal um, I'm not sure exactly what the color was but uh, let's see if I can get it open uh, it's a little bit of teal green and gray together and I think this does a pretty good uh, representation of the colors of the uh, the transformers that are on the line. They're kind of green, kind of gray, a little bit of in between. Uh, I also mixed up a color of uh, what I call thinned green. I don't, see, I don't know if you can see the color. Um, it's just uh, forest green with uh, water. And uh, I thinned it down with a little bit of white as well to, uh, to actually fade my Burlington Northern stuff. Um, but this will also uh, go on to the Transformers as well. Um, and then for further details, I think a lot of us modelers can say that we have a lot of these little uh, leftover capsules full of um, uh, coupler springs. Uh, what I'm going to do is take two pairs of tweezers on each side, stretch them out a little bit so they're still pigtail. That's what I use on my pigtails for my semi trucks, for the uh, uh, airlines on the back of the trucks as well. But. Um, now I'll go ahead and show you a shot of that, I guess. So you can see the, the photos that I showed you there of the, of the uh, coupler springs stretched out. They look pretty good, um, especially when you paint them. Well, I'm going to stretch a couple of those out and stretch them from the pole to the little insulator piece. Uh, and then, you know, I'm going to detail paint them because uh, I don't like them all silver. And then the, um, the custom color that I mentioned to you will be for the insulator glass. Um, some people paint them white and some people paint them full on turquoise green. I paint them a little gray green. And then when I'm done with the entire telephone pole, uh, I'll actually spray it down with uh, Krylon matte clear and uh, dull them down. Uh, 
Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and put the wires on there and detail paint one pole and show you the pole and see if you approve. Be right back. Okay, sorry for the background, but um, here's the pole out in the real sunlight. I uh, painted the uh, insulators on the guy wires yellow and plastic. Put the uh, Tamiya tape on there. I sprayed it dull coat and uh, weathered it with AIM weathering powders. Um, yeah, it looks all right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set it up on the um, layout where it goes and uh, you can take a look then. So this is where the pole goes on the diorama. As you can see, I, uh, I plan for the guy wires to be away from the uh, crossing cross box and uh, to have the uh, guy wires go perpendicular with the road and the, the uh, train tracks. It'll look a lot better when I get a good backdrop outside of what the telephone pole looks like. But basically, I'm going to be getting shots like this of uh, train engines maybe either in the crossing here or just behind it. Maybe even on the right side of the telephone pole. And, uh, and then the pole will be foreground slash background when I take photos like this from this side. So uh, anyway, that's probably going to do it for the telephone poles until I do the wire. Uh, wire is the very, very last thing I'm going to be doing on this layout or diorama. Um, if I had to go back and redo this pole, I would have cut off more of the insulators. I actually think I forgot to do that. I'm not going to wire up every one of those. Uh, in real life, sometimes there are uh, insulators that don't have wires on them. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pretend like that's uh, the way that this pole was designed. Uh, I don't know about the yellow Tamiya tape. I don't know if it's going to stay on there. Uh, I guess only time will tell. But uh, anyway, uh, let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching.